Welcome to Matters of Decorum. I'm Scott Corum. This is what matters to me. I'm going to name a fallacy today. Uh, I don't know if someone has already come up with a name for this, but I'm going to name one because it applies fairly generally across many areas of my life. Maybe I'll be the first. Who knows? I'm going to call it the one more thing fallacy. Uh, and this fallacy states there is never just one more thing. Give me some examples from uh, across my life. I'm going out to do a something. I, back in the days when I could go out and do things, this is 2020 after all, I'm going to the store, I want to get a hamburger, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing a, a candy bar, just one thing. And my wife just wants me to do just one more thing. But it's not one. Just stop and get this. And do this. And, and in her mind, me stopping along my path or just off my path or somewhere wildly diverse from my path to take care of a task as long as I'm out is one thing. But it's not. It's seven or eight things I need to do that are between me and the enjoyment of my hamburger. I'm playing, say, Ark Survival Evolved, which I've been playing a lot of lately. And it's getting towards the end of the night. I'm on the server with the guys. And, well, okay, I just want to do one more thing. I just want to upgrade one more piece of equipment. But there are tasks involved in upgrading equipment. You got to go get the materials to do it. You rarely have enough uh, with, from what you've already gotten. So you got to go do some mining, then do some refining. Or you're out mining and bringing stuff back. There's something that attacks you, and you get into a fight, and then you get into a vendetta against the thing that attacked you. And now you got to go out and kill ten more just so you feel satisfied in the depths of your soul that you've exacted enough murder after they killed your Argentavis twice. It's not one thing. There are a number of steps, a number of tasks between you and completing the thing you wanted to get done. I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm watching a lot of tutorials right now. Uh, I'm, I'm working on learning the Unreal 4 engine, which is a very rewarding uh, process, but a lot of the um, tutorials are a ways behind the uh, the current release, so I've got to do a lot of catching up with uh, with you know the tutorial says one thing and Unreal doesn't do that thing that way anymore. So you got to go find out how Unreal does that thing and then do finish the steps. But people who make tutorials, particularly for Blender and Unreal Four, probably a lot of other things, have this stupid bad habit of they get towards the end of a process and they say, okay, now one more thing, but it's never one more thing. Okay, now one more thing, we've got to calculate for where the character's looking. And now we calculate for, well, okay, and then one more thing, we've got to see what blocks that line of sight. And then, oh, one more thing, we've got to get this list of things that could be blocking his line of sight and extract, which there's never one more thing. Often, one more thing is a carrot that is dangled in front of someone who has sat through something for quite some time, or who is trying to get something of their own done uh, when you want them to do something else, when you don't want them to, you don't want to lose their attention, so you dangle one more thing in front of them. There's only one more thing, but there's not. There's a number more things. You might think in your day-to-day -day life, oh, I've only got one more thing to do, but that breaks down into a number of tasks, and each one can suffer its own complications. There's no such thing as one more thing. Eventually, theoretically, you do the last task and then you can move on. You can do that thing that you're trying to get to all along eventually. But almost never after you believed you only had one more thing to do. That might just be my life, but I've noticed that happen in a lot of people's lives and in tutorials. And you now there's a reason that sometimes the server is online until 10 o'clock or later. 
we have a tendency to get involved in one more thing. I see no reason that this should not carry through to role-playing games that I run. Tell you a story, because that's kind of what I do. Tuesday night game, playing the victory system. We're sitting in the game shop, so this is a while ago. Game shop closes at 9. The owner is very good to us and lets us float until 9.15, 9.30 sometimes. But it's... The, 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 the group is in a town with Lovecraftian influences, trying to find their way through these situations. And they've dealt with a couple of really big things. Um, one of the player characters is an assassin. He's got some targets to hit in the town. Um, but that's kind of a secondary, that's his personal set of goals as opposed to what the group is doing there. And they launch a church into space. It, it, it's, it's kind of amazing. Um, just the way everything worked out. But by the time we've had this day, I've had a long day. A lot of the people at the table, it's 10 people at that table. A lot of them have had days and it's getting to be like 9 15 and they're looking at us like they want to close the shop and okay uh so so break for next week and the guy playing the assassin like i got to kill one guy i i just got one more thing i just got one guy to kill now if you know me as a game master nothing is ever that cut and dried very rarely, when you're starting off in a campaign, when you are uh, doing things to establish how tough the characters are and how competent, you might have some one-shot kills from a distance. You might have some some uh, really fast, okay, I go in for my target, I get my target, and now we're done. Okay. But this is a ways into the campaign. They're in a terrible situation. Things are obviously more complicated than they were at first led to believe they were, but he just wants to kill one guy. Crooked district attorney uh, lives in a picket-fenced house with his wife and 2.5 children and his, his uh, old Cadillac out in the front that, that is polished and obviously well-loved and guys covering up for some fairly heinous crimes going on in the town of New Hamlin. And... The assassin just wants to go and plug him on his way to work. Catch him in the driveway, do the job, walk away, clean-ish. Okay. The rest of the party's like, hey, we'll hang out in the area because, you know, just one thing. And then and then we got to go because it's it's like, you know, they're, they're, they're looking at us like they want to close the shop. So they show up, see the guy come to the door kiss his wife, walk out to his car. Gunshot rings out. Called shot. Dead smack between the eyes. Penetrates the cranium. Explodes in his brain. Dead. Just dead. Guy drops right there. Wife screams. Clean. You know, they, 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 they could, theoretically, at this point, just pull out and get away. I'd been planning this encounter for quite some time. Nothing was as it seemed. And... Do I... It, it's 9.20. Do I abandon this? No. No. I, I can't. Because this has story repercussions. This was not going to be a one more thing. You can't say, this is going to be more complicated than you think it is. Can we pick this up next week? Because it's supposed to seem like a fairly simple thing. It's that little bit of misdirection. That, that, that sleight of hand in role playing. Introduce story elements for later on. Make some encounters uh, get properly set up. Can't just skip it. So, guy drops... Wife screams. Um, the assassin starts his exit strategy. The guy's Cadillac stands up, roars, and charges the assassin. 
which point they realize the Cadillac is actually a Lovecraftian horror, a giant gelatinous Lovecraftian horror that has armored itself in the body panels of an old Cadillac, which is the shape that it holds most times unless it is committing horrible acts at the behest of what was its owner, its mate, and its lover. The DA was into some messed up stuff, and he was totally doing it with his car. This actually becomes important. The fight with the car monster takes a while. The rest of the party has to jump in. They jump in, and they throw everything they've got. It's an outside creature, so it's harder to damage, and it's got all these amorphous things, and the horn goes off every so often, and it's hitting them with fenders and tires, which are hard enough to get hit with, that they're not being backed by the massive strength of a eldritch creature from beyond the far stars. And yeah, yeah, it's a rough fight. And they put it down, and they look at the house, and they're wondering what else is there. They knew that the DA had two kids. One of them was sickly and didn't come out of the house much. The other was fairly normal and was in the house yelling with his mom because things were going on outside. And as they wonder what's possibly up with the second kid, this clawed squid in a diaper blasts out of the window and latches onto the assassin's face and there is another fight with child number two, which was not the human wife's child, but the DA's child with his car. Which led to another fight while they're trying to pull diaper squid baby off of the assassin's face uh, without killing the assassin, which was becoming increasingly difficult as time went on and conjecturing about, you know, how you arrange these things with your Cadillac. And eventually they finish up. It's 10 o'clock. The guys who are waiting to close the shop have been sitting at the next table over listening with rapt attention because, well, these guys just shot a district attorney, had a fight with his car, and then the car's baby jumped out through a window and tried to kill the assassin. I stop and listen. The one more thing fallacy is... um. The bane of my existence and one of my favorite tools in role-playing games when I'm running a game. I've talked about um, running games that are almost entirely the consequences of certain actions. And this is how to adjudicate those consequences in the most inconvenient and complicating way you can. It starts with leading your players into the belief that a task is going to be simple. If they've gotten used to this, um, which my players eventually did, you can switch that over to giving them enough relatively easy tasks that they get lulled into believing their competence has risen past the level of difficulty that you're willing to run for them. And then you get the, well, now I can handle one more thing. And then you demonstrate to them eventually that no, no, they can't. Um, there's a fine line here, though. And that fine line is my fault. Literally, the line is, where can I, on, on the good side of the line, I can look at the player characters and say, or at the players at the end of the night and go, was any of this my fault? And the players will look at you and go, nope, that was not your fault. We did that to ourselves. On the other side of the line, you ask, was this my fault? And they go, yeah, yeah, that was your fault. You did not have to do it that way. Um... 
the line is where it seems like you're doing this deliberately. And that is almost more a matter of technique and practice than the technique that you're using. You never want it to seem unfair. At the same time, it's unfair. No matter how hard your players try to arrange things so that it's just one more thing. I just pull this trigger and it's over. I just kill this one guy and it's over. We managed to stop this thing from casting the spell and it's over. And once they, they commit to that and once they put that in, If they put in the time to research this, if they put in the time to strategize this, if they sit down and use their heads and ask questions, what could the consequences of this action be? Then that's amazing. And then you still run those consequences, but you account for the fact that your players have accounted for them. That's not a stick in the gears, that is everything working properly. And the, the reaction you get from players after playing it like that, that they seem that they, they feel like they've done something brilliant because they kind of have. Um, if they're workmanlike about it and they go through the steps and do their detective work and, and look up the stuff they need to look up so that they're prepared when the car stands up, could they have, could that party have discovered the car was an elder's monstrosity beforehand? Probably. Yeah, actually, the, the information was there. They would just have had to have done more legwork. But they were involved in other things, and the assassin thought it was a one and done. And that's not my fault. That's where it is. If I come up with something, if, if they examine something, oh, this thing's perfectly safe, and they go to the time and effort, and they research it and examine it, and no, this thing's going to be fine, and then you spring something on them, that's your fault. That's, that's when you've done something wrong. That's being completely unfair. If your players have taken the time to work out What's going to happen if we take this action and try to mitigate any negative effects? That's good role playing. That's good role playing for most characters. You know, your your incautious characters, your characters who, by their statistics or flaws, are not cautious individuals. They're not going to engage in that. Hopefully, you've got a few level my headed folks in there. But if they're playing characters that are designed to be incautious, they've got nothing to say about the consequences of incautious actions. It's the downside of I was just playing my character. So, one more thing. It's never one more thing. There's a final task. But that usually shows up well after the one more thing has been declared. And if you lead your players to believe there is only one more thing, do it carefully. And if they stop believing that there's one more thing, you've taught them a valuable lesson about your style and about life in general. And if they take the time to examine their consequences of their actions beforehand and perhaps mitigate those. That's that's an evening. That's that can be better than the rolling for initiative and having a fight with a monster you didn't expect is laying out how you're going to get around that monster or how that monster is going to be less of a problem. Having yourself fully prepared for it instead of having it jump on you. That's also just fine. It doesn't have to be about the combat. I will often give characters as much experience, if not more, for creative ways of avoiding the combat. Because 
tactics, and strategy are their own reward and should be. Well, thank you for following me along with this particular rant. Um, I was going to talk about bullying this week, and that has turned out to be a very loaded topic in my head for a number of reasons. Uh, if you've seen the Dungeon Masters, you probably have some idea why. Um, but I think I'll talk about that one next week. It's going to take me a little time to gear up and uh, do a couple of gut checks to get that one out properly. But that one's coming. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, give me a thumbs down. Feedback is feedback. If there's anything else you'd like to hear me talk about, if you have your own experiences with one more thing uh, or your own techniques that you would uh, like to address, if there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about, topics you'd like to hear me address, leave me a comment below. Uh, I will like, I, I will love getting your comments and you'll love leaving me one. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, why not? My channel is awesome. I invite you to hit the subscribe button. If you do, be sure to hit the notification bell so that you're alerted when my videos become available. If you'd like to help the channel out in a more substantial manner, I invite you to hit me up my Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash scottcorum, and consider donating. Absolutely anything helps. allows me to make better videos more often. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I'm Scott Corum, this is what has mattered to me, and I will see you next time on the next Matters of Decorum. Thank <laughs> you.